What a ball game. What a series on a great day of action in Super Regional play here on ESPN2. Mike Morgan, the All-American Todd Walker, 2-2 game. We have reached the ninth. The story is the man on the mound, Kevin Copps, breaking all kinds of records for him in terms of pitch count, length of stint, and, of course, it's his first start of the season in his 33rd appearance he has gotten better as the game has gone along and he's now thrown 115 pitches his previous high was 90. hammering that one foul is jose torres dangerous part of the lineup still again it's a rather long lineup for nc state torres tresh and Brown, Torres has already hit two home runs in this Super Regional. Down in the count, 0-2. Hit high, hit deep to left, backing up is Wallace, it's gone! home run of the series for the freshman shortstop Jose Torres yeah you said it Mike this guy's got one swing groove and it's to elevate the ball on the pull side the third home run for Jose Torres and I think that'll be it for Kevin Cox that is the first time they've gotten to Kevin Cox since the third inning that's when Johnny Butler touched him for a home run. A whole lot of guts. And a whole lot of cheering going on for the effort by Kevin Copps today. Yeah, Copps meant to put that in the dirt. Couldn't do it. Just enough elevation for Jose Torres to get under it. He knew it was gone. And NC State in the ninth takes the lead. Rick Copps looking on, the father of Kevin Copps, who gave a Herculean effort today. Likely the last time we'll see him in an Arkansas uniform if this game holds up. He certainly is hoping that it does not. So too are 12,000 fans at Baumwalker Stadium. Kevin Copps gave everything that you could possibly ask out of a young man. They wouldn't be here without him. And this might not be a one-run game without him. They'll turn it over to Patrick Wicklander, who was the pitching hero on Friday in a game one victory for Arkansas. He threw 99 pitches. We'll see what he's got here today, Todd. Well, mostly fastballs. He's going to mix in the slider change. Both fastballs, four seam up to 94, and then the two seam cutter. Still a tough part of the lineup with Luca Tresh. Plenty of power in his bat. 15 home runs on the season. And as Wickler, Wicklander hits the outside corner for a strike. Looking ahead to the bottom of the ninth for Arkansas. It's the bottom third of the order. But that bottom third has really led the way for much of the last two games. Nice pick by Battles for the first out of the ninth. And starting things off in the bottom of the ninth will be none other than Charlie Welch, who's been one of the hottest and best stories going for this Arkansas team. And for Patrick Wickland, remember, he started the season out of the pen. I mean, he's, he made all 10 starts in the SEC schedule, all 10 weekends. He became the Friday night guy after game one against Alabama. But... He's used to coming out of the pen. And again, when you're throwing strikes consistently, that's what they want to see from these guys. Fill up the zone early. Devontae Brown, the batter, 0 for 3. We told you the story about Wicklander on Friday. Young man. All of a sudden, lost a ton of weight, nearly 30 pounds, felt very weak. 
His roommates were concerned, said, you got to go to the hospital, man. We did find out that he has type 1 diabetes. That is a pump for insulin, which is what diabetes requires at times. Since then, he's been fine. He's put the weight back on. He's got his strength back. Hasn't affected him at all. He's been really their ace in the rotation this year. Another play on the infield. This will be Smith. Guns it across the diamond for the second out. That's just got by Smith over at third base. Over to his right. That is a long throw. That's why on the left side of the infield, you have got to have a cannon. A nice play, accurate throw for the second out. Two down for Menchie. Strike at the knees. Menchik is 0 for 3. You mentioned that Arkansas defense. They haven't made an error all weekend long. Menchik drives one into the alley in left center field. And he will try to leg it into a double slide head first. He's there. Now a runner in scoring position as the Wolfpack will try to pad a one-run lead here in the ninth. Yeah, Arkansas has played great of this whole series. I mean, banged out 21 runs in the first game. Lost 6-5 to five yesterday, but was in that one. And defensively, like you mentioned, they have been flawless. Nine-hole hitter is J.T. Jarrett. A pair of singles and three trips to the plate. Spiked in the dirt, and that'll allow an extra 90 feet of real estate for Menchik as he trots to third. And that might factor in, Mike, because that takes away a pitch from Wicklander. Again, we expect Opus to just about pick everything, but you don't want to make that mistake again, especially if you get a two-strike count and spike it in the dirt give him a free run. Tap to the left side. Again, that infield getting a lot of work. Battles. Perfect. Side retired. The number one team in the country will need a rally in the ninth to keep their season alive. Matt, thank you much. Ole Miss, one of six SEC teams left in Super Regional play. Or should I say five after Tennessee knocked off a fellow SEC school. And LSU, Arkansas backs against the wall, the number one SEC school. They won the regular season. They won the tournament. Number one in the country in every poll imaginable. They won game one by 19 runs, and here they are in a one-run hole in the bottom of the ninth, facing the closer, Evan Justice. Off the end of the bat, and quickly down in the count is Charlie Welch. One ball, two strikes. Welch, does he have one more heroic moment left in him? In a somewhat surprising and random stat, Arkansas has not hit a home run in the ninth inning all year long. They lead the country with 109 long balls, but they've never gotten one in the ninth. They will certainly be in search of one here. Or just get on base would certainly be nice. You saw the graphic in terms of number one seeds. Number one overall national seeds to lose in the Super Regionals. It's rare, but it has happened. And again, only one time since the format began in 1999. As the number one overall seed won the title, that was Miami in 1999. Since then, we've gone 20 years with the number one overall seed not bringing home the national championship. Tapper to the left side. Charging his men's chic double clutch and delivers a perfect strike to Murr for the first out. As we take a look at tonight's Capital One rewarding performance, Jose Torres with his, with his third home run in as many games.
He's got the home run swing grooved and off the best pitcher in the country, Kevin Copps, in the ninth inning. Jose Torres puts the Wolfpack ahead in this one, and now Razorbacks only with two outs to burn. Opitz and then battles behind him. Eight, nine in the lineup. Casey Opitz. He has been a staple of this program for a while. He wants to get back to another College World Series. Another tapper to the left side. This time it's Torres. And NC State is one out away from their first World Series in eight years. It would be only the third in the history of the program. Jalen battles the final hope. He's walked twice. He's grounded out once. And Justice just keeps pumping in heaters. That one at 96. Well, battles only has six home runs, but he's got a lot of pop. NC State has been great on the road all year long. 18 and four. That's the second best mark in the country. They were blown out in game one. They were trailing 2-0 in game two, but they won it. New hope here and a chance to pick up another road win in the most hostile of environments. 1-1, check swing, bouncer racing the first as battles. He doesn't beat it. NC State wins it, going to Omaha for the first time since 2013. Two great head coaches with a whole lot of respect for one another shaking hands. Dave Van Horn and Elliot Avent in his 25th year as the head coach of the Wolfpack. They started one and eight in ACC play. Last out, battles, foot race. The Wolfpack, one of the top fielding teams in the country throughout the year, taking care of most every play that came their way defensively. You can't say enough about what they got on the mound. They held Arkansas to two runs on four hits. They did it with a couple of freshmen. And then Evan Justice, for the second straight day, slams the door on Arkansas. A stunner as the number one national seed, the number one team in the country falls in two straight games to the Wolfpack. NC State with just their third World Series all time, the second under Coach Avent. NC State advances. They will take on the Cardinal of Stanford. What a game. What a series. Todd Walker, some final thoughts. Well, NC State first half of the season didn't play very well. Walked into this Super Regional, 17 wins in their last 21. The second half, they were the hottest team, and they showed it here. Lost the first game, win the next two. Congratulations to the Wolfpack. That's going to do it for us, for Todd Walker and an outstanding crew in Fayetteville. This is Mike Morgan saying so long for now. NC State pulls off a stunner. The Wolfpack are going to Omaha as we send it back to studio.